Hello, I'm your host Ricky Saez. We're hanging out in San Jacinto Plaza. Now, if you look to my left, you'll see the old historic Crest building. Now, some good news, that building is soon going to get renovated. We'll have these stories and more on this edition of Your City in Five. Renovation of the Crest Building will begin soon after City Council approved a $2.1 million incentive to bring the building back to life. The building is owned by businessman Paul Foster, who has committed to invest more than $18 million of his own money to restore it into a must-see spot while still honoring the building's history. It's going to be a, a historical restoration, subject to approval by the State Historic Commission and the National Park Service. Um, and we've already uh, applied to have it registered in the National Register of Historic Places. Renovation of the 84-year-old building includes construction of a food hall, an event center and a spa connected by an underground tunnel to the Plaza Hotel next door. City leaders say the renovation is another piece of the puzzle that will improve downtown and boost economic development. Our downtown architecture is eclectic. Um, it's unlike anything we see in any other cities. And I think that what's amazing is that we have um, city council support, the county support, and the private sector support to really preserve those buildings. This is just one more addition to our community, one more thing that we're bringing back, one more thing that demonstrates our resolve for not forgetting where we, we've come from and not forgetting who we are and really preserving our history. The Crest Building has been vacant for more than two decades. Renovation should be complete in about two years. The city now has a new district map. The city council approved the map for redistricting. The new district boundaries are now in effect and will be used for the next 10 years. The maps will be used in the November general election as well. Residents can review an interactive map on the city's website. You can enter your home address and find out who your city representative is and how to contact them. The city needs your thoughts on proposed amendments to the city's charter that is under review by the Ad Hoc Charter Advisory Committee. The city's charter is similar to the Constitution, but at a municipal level. Several in-person community meetings are planned in May in different parts of town. Meetings will also be broadcast on the city's YouTube channel. Visit ElPasoTexas.gov for dates and locations. There are more firefighters responding to emergencies while keeping our city safe. Firefighter Class 99 recently graduated from the Fire Academy. They had their badges pinned by loved ones. The group completed months of intense training and studying. Congratulations and thank you for serving our community. Now, if you'd like to become a firefighter, visit the fire department website that's at the bottom of your screen. The city of El Paso is in need of lifeguards. The Aquatics Division of the Parks and Recreation Department needs about 70 to 80 lifeguards for indoor pools and outdoor pools that will soon open during Memorial Day weekend. The lifeguards already on deck are having to work at multiple pool locations, and this is one reason more are needed. The certification that we require is a Red Cross certification, and it is given by the Parks and Recreation Department. You do need to be at least 15 years old by the time you get your certification. So it's a great time to come and work with the city. We are offering some great incentives right now. If you do get hired, you do get a $1,000 sign-on bonus. To apply to become a lifeguard, visit the city's website and click under the job section. Hey, Mario. Hey, what's going on, Rick? What are you doing, man? I'm meditating for my mental health, Rick. Oh, that's a good idea, especially here at San Jacinto Plaza. But did you know that Live Active El Paso is rolling out a series that focuses on mental health for Mental Health Month, that's in May. Um... The first Steps to Mental Health series begins May 2nd with a self-care class. There are four sessions with different topics surrounding mental health. Mental health is very important for the Leave Active Initiative because mental health is part of your overall health. And it's very important to increase awareness of mental health conditions in our community. The classes are in person and virtual. For more information, visit liveactivevp.com. There's a striking exhibition on view at the El Paso Museum of History that you'll want to see. Black Survival Guide or How to Live Through a Police Riot is a traveling exhibit organized by the Delaware Art Museum. With pictures, blow up images and text, it takes a look back at racism and unrest in Wilmington in 1968 following the death of Martin Luther King Jr. The exhibit is free and open to the public. Hey, Mario, so how did the meditation go? Hey, I'm feeling stressless and energized. That's good, man. Mental health is extremely important. And that's going to do it for us on this edition of Your City in 5. For Mario Ramirez, I'm Ricky Saias. Stay safe and please be good to each other. We'll see you next time on, on Your, Your City, City in 5. 5. Let's go get a smoothie, man. Let's do it. On me, bro.